All right, folks, today on this dreary, cloudy, rainy afternoon, we're gonna talk about my top five picks for striper fishing during the fall run. This video is being uploaded at the peak time of the striper fall run. Typically, this was the time of year that I felt like Tony Soprano. The next three weeks, from probably the last week of October, through the first two weeks of December, the only way out for me was to either end up in the can or in the grave. That's uh, how I would equivalent the final three weeks of the season that I used to experience. So I'm pretty apprehensive about making these types of videos because it's mostly opinion based with some experience, of course, but more than likely someone somewhere will probably put out a video like this that has far less experience and is just doing this for views. And I'm not saying I'm not doing this for views, but at least I have 10 years plus experience putting in 30 hour days. So let's get started. These aren't in any particular order. Some of this stuff is very situational, but let's get started. All right, so the first lore we're gonna talk about is the diamond jig. Um, typically, you will still see these being frequently used on head boats or party boats. Absolutely, these make striper fishing very simple on the ocean when there is a sand deal run. Um, of course, they come in different sizes, uh, A17, A27, that reflects the weight. When stripers are on sand deals, the, the fishing experience is uh, a little different. Sand deals tend to form in big clouds, and a lot of the times you're presenting these sorts of jigs by vertically jigging. Um, and typically, a lot of the times the sand deal runs, if you're from a boat or kayak, would happen in relatively deep water. And the method usually employed by both the party boats or from your own personal boat would be called squidding. And basically squidding is steady lifting and dropping of the jig, reflecting a sand deal dropping back into the sand and kicking up um, debris off the bottom. Um, these tubes absolutely made a huge difference for that. Um, and these can be fished in various different ways. And they're also very effective at a large variety of different species. This being said, the diamond jig made sand eel fishing stupid easy. When sand eel fishing, when you're using different types of profiles like bucktails, topwater, paddle tails, sand eel fishing used to be super difficult if you're throwing the wrong profile. But if the fish are on sand eels, and yes, I understand this is a limited bait. Sand eel runs don't happen every year. I understand this as well. But if the fish are keyed in on a patch of sand eels, and that may be regional or locational, and you are not catching fish, the diamond jig with the tube makes it a hell of a lot easier. It really does. And like I said, you will see most party boats and head boats still absolutely using diamond jigs more than any other lure, especially if the fish are on sand eels. I mean, we caught stripers, we caught bluefish, we caught cod. It still pays to have these around. They have caught more stripers in the history of time than probably any other lure. Uh, next, so nothing speaks enjoyable fishing when fishing topwater. Absolutely, there is times when topwater is king too. Um, to me, a lot of my memorable back bay fall run of fishing, stripers were busting on baits like Bunker or Manhattan, um, and they were actively swirling and feeding on the surface. Um, nothing would draw a more exciting strike, and at times very good quality fish than topwater lures. Um, absolutely, if you're a stingy fisherman like I am and you had a lot of bluefish in the mix, which no longer seems to be an issue in the last three years. Back Bay runs were teeming with teen-sized bluefish on Bonker, and you had to kind of weed through them to get to the stripers, and you would use some cheaper poppers. Now you can probably get away with higher-end poppers in the you know $15 to $20 range, and not really worry about the bluefish bite-offs as you would in the early 2010 to 2014 range, where bluefish striper 50-50 ratio was almost the norm. Uh, but absolutely, you know, throwing these on marsh banks, throwing these after a striper blows up on a bait, the most fun way to fish by far, and also pretty productive when the situation warrants it. Topwater plugs in that one to two ounce range are always packed with me for this sort of situation. Next, let's talk the very versatile um, sluggo, stick bait, um, whiptail, assassin type 
soft plastic. Um, these are more your finesse presentation type lures. What would I throw these in? So here's a good example. There's a marsh bank and I have a very limited time or limited area I can show my presentation to a striper and I wanted to work it very slow and get let my bass get multiple looks at my lure because there's only a tiny piece of real estate that this striper is hanging out in whether it be a bridge pile and a rock pile etc um, you know sod bank this type of lure gives me the maximum exposure probably to let this striper think about eating my presentation you know from weightless this is a nine inch hoagie absolutely i've caught so many trophy sized fish on this type of lure to something a little bit heavier you know with a two ounce jig head on a very tight bridge span for example these types of lures are very versatile yeah, what do they mimic? Oh, that beats me. They mimic lots of things. Of course, eels come to mind and other slender baits. But basically, they can be fished in various different ways. Um, they cut through the water very effectively. If I'm fisting, fisting, fishing, uh, uh, fishing very fast current, sometimes I might opt for a slender bait with a heavy jig head versus a paddle tail, which I might often default to. And absolutely, you know, you say, oh, this is a crazy big bait. It's 10 inches. You can catch 25-inch fish all day on a 10-inch bait like this. If stripers are feeding on very small baits, sure, a small profile will help. But, you know, carry a variety of different profiles. Of course, a variety of different jig heads and weights to match the size of your presentation. But everyone might have their own opinion on that. So very versatile, very useful, um, excellent at giving a longer presentation in a tight area, um, a very finesse oriented presentation, um, such a versatile lure. From hoagies to BKDs, um, sluggos, my own brand, there's a lot of choices to, to fish these types of lures with. They are extremely effective. They have very easy action to impart, just subtle twitches of your rod gets these things. Hell, you could even put it in a rod holder on your boat and half the time if the waves, if the waves are rocking your boat back and forth, this is what's going to happen. So um, the action is very easy to impart on these types of lures. They're great for beginners and experienced anglers too. All right, so these two, the next two are going to be my preferences. These are my top two and I will always carry these. Um, so right here is a selection of bucktails. I like to fish typically from the kayak. I'm fishing three quarters of an ounce to two ounce tops probably. I, some situations when I used to fish head boats and party boats would call for three ounces. Um, right here is my classic, oh gosh, when I fished from the surf, when I fished from the head boats. This is an Andrus Jetty Caster, guys. Uh, one of my favorite bucktails ever. Amazing hooks on the sharp. Um, this is a two ounce jetty caster that has seen a lot of fish, man. Well tied, well built. Um, typically, we used to, I wish I had some left. These were always tipped with Uncle Josh pork rinds. Um, now there's fat cow and otter tails seem, seem to be available. The diversity of ways you can fish these jigs is unparalleled. You can fish these towards the bottom, you can fish them up high in the water column, um, they can be bounced along. Really effective lures and listen, I know people always say that bucktails are hard to fish with. What weight do you select? I wanted to cast it further. It's something that you build up confidence in. You start catching a couple of fish with them and then before you know it, you always use that. So this is for example a one ounce Smiling Bill bucktail, two ounce Andrus Jetty Caster. And then we can share some new information. This right here is the Eagle Claw Trocar Bucktails. And I found these just this week. And maybe, you know, I don't update my tackle box too often. This is a three quarter ounce bucktail, right? Sure, you might say the hairs kind of suck on this. This hook, by far, for a three quarter ounce bucktail, in terms of a multi-diversity hook, I can use this hook for weak fish. I can use this hook for striper, more than likely. 
and I've used it for redfish this week. This is finally the smallest bucktail with the smallest hook that I've been most impressed with. That I am very confident in this hook to probably land almost any size striver. And you guys see how I fight my fish. I don't just winch them in, right? Oh, catch another one because you're, you know, commercial fishing. No, no, I let the fish will take drag as it's supposed to, unless I'm fishing a rocky area or a bridge where I have no opportunity to let this fish take drag. And I'll show you a couple examples of, um, I wish as a kid, somebody just told me, oh, if you want to see if your hook is good enough for striper, go red fishing. Uh, I'm learning that here in Carolina. So, for example, here's a couple of uh, encounters I've had with redfish on regular, I guess these are Mustad Ultra Points, and you've seen in videos where I've pointed out um, some Kalen's jig heads getting demolished by redfish. And redfish, I believe it's more their mouths being with such strong crushing ability. Look at that. Come on, focus camera. I, I have kind of a cheap one. It crushed the hook point to face downwards. Like there is no, it's not sharp anymore. I mean, this fish pulled the hook in a minute of the fight. And this is a, I think it's a Mustad Ultra Point. But my God, this shows you what, even on light drag, but when you start putting them into the test of, you know, redfish, or if you're fighting stripers with clamped down drags, max drag settings, this is what's going to happen to your hooks. This happened to me in the last two weeks with redfish here in Carolina. So um, opening them up, crushing your, your points. Um, I believe this trocar hook on these bucktails, this shouldn't happen. I did land one. In terms of if you're looking for a lightweight bucktail to throw at striper, and you're not going to be too concerned about the hook opening up, I think this is what you're looking for here. So... Don't quote me on that yet, but I think this is going to be your game changer. Okay, folks, and finally, my favorite, of course, is you. if you follow me, you know I make these lures um, also, but you know, at the same time, I've used others for years and years and years. Um, that comes down to the paddle tail shads. They can be fished so diversely as well. They impart awesome action just on straight vertical jigging and current. Um, they can be fished with an aggressive retrieve, a slow retrieve, a fast cadence can be used for all sorts of different species. I've always carried shads ranging from five inches to six inches up to nine inches. Um, you know, for example, if I'm swamped with 21 to 23 inch fish and I might be confident there are some larger fish in the mix, absolutely. We're going to go up to a seven inch shad, we'll go up to a nine inch shad. Um, a 28 inch fish has no problem swallowing a nine inch shad. Hence the popularity of the mojo that the boats use. You can just pitch these from their, your boat or kayak as well. There's absolutely situations the surf angler can use a 9-inch shad. Um, and typically, oh, of course, you know, if I'm plugging or boat fishing, you know, I can comfortably throw 2 to 3 ounces on a lot of these bigger shads as well. For a subtle or more finesse presentation, 5-inch shads. This is a three-quarter ounce VMC swim bait hook, for example. Awesome hook um, for most striper applications. To my favorite still, which is the Hoagie Barbarian series. This is definitely my favorite jig head and hook combination for trophy striper. So um, definitely the paddle tail. If the striper are feeding on mullet or bunker slash Manhattan, you can't beat this. Something about the paddle tail absolutely drives striper wild. Um, like no other lore in my opinion. I mean, that's why I started making them. That's why I throw them all the time. It's also my situation being from a kayak where I need to fish different parts of the water column while drifting or fishing a rip. Effectively, I always prefer the paddle tail as my number one go-to. And absolutely, if you're not a person that likes rigging your own shads, the market is full of different rigged up pre-rigged shads from all sorts of weights all sorts of colors and all sorts of hook sizes and hook points and you know etc etc this one's been dragged through that 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 marsh sulfur for a little bit guys i hope you enjoyed the video i hope this was useful um, there's links in the video's description jnh.com my website etc of where you can buy these lures I know everyone's going to have their own opinion on this. Listen, um, my experience, 10% surf, 20% boat, 70% kayak. I think that adds up to 100%.
I hope you enjoy.